What's up guys? This is Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I am here in my lab in Denver, Colorado, and I'm going to be showing you guys how I transfer cultures from petri dishes onto new petri dishes in order to isolate the colony. So anytime you're um, intaking a new um, culture or if you're cloning a wild mushroom or even if you're just cloning a culture from your your grow or um, pulling from a liquid culture you want to make sure that you have a pure strain or pure mycelium growing so that when you start to amplify your mycelium you're not amplifying any contaminants with that so um, Right now, I've got a couple cultures from my friend Zach, who I've been helping, who has actually been helping me as well. Um, he donated some local cultures that I'm gonna be growing out in my um, fruiting room to test these cultures for him. And I'm really excited about these new strains. Um, we've got this, uh, local Colorado oyster um, from Jefferson County and then we've got another Aspen oyster that uh, was growing on cottonwood and then we've got this Flamulina species or a local Enoki, Enoki Taki that I'm going to be um, transferring onto auger but I'll just show you guys my process. Um, I'm mostly concerned about this local oyster here. You can see the kind of uh, funky growth that's going on with this plate. So my main goal is to be selecting that healthy mycelium at the top and then growing that out on a fresh dish. And you wanna look for rhizomorphic growth and um, no contaminants which they will expose themselves as the plate grows out and doing a couple transfers will help guarantee the sterility it looks like he already did one transfer on this plate but I'm gonna just um, double check before I put this on any grain auger um, this this culture looks really healthy so this is what I'm going for really bright white mycelium as well as this uh, enoki culture. Um, I'm going to be transferring these onto a plate and then from there I'm going to transfer it to a liquid culture and then go into a grain spawn and then from the grain I'm going to be doing a bulk substrate and then putting it into the fruiting chamber and during that whole process is very important to maintain sterility from the beginning so that you don't get contamination and waste all of that time and materials along the way. So the first thing that I'll do is sterilize the hood. So I have 15% bleach right here that I'm gonna spray down. And I will let that dry and um, don my lab coat. Um, I've got some plates right here that I'm gonna be working with. Um, but yeah, clean hood is the most important thing, especially when you're doing plate transfers or when you're pouring auger plates. So I'll go ahead and let this dry and put on my lab coat. All right, a couple of the materials that I use for this are um, a sterile blade. So I always use these autoclavable pouches. They're really nice because they show you um, confirmation of its sterility. I don't know if you can see that, but um, it's kind of a double check on my autoclave every run. I want to make sure that this uh, little dot here is gray, which you can see, and that means that this blade is sterile. And then I also use um, these sterile blades. I like the number 10s 
just because of the angle of the blade. Um, it's just a personal preference, but you can get these pretty cheap online. And I always use um, just one, one blade per strain just so there's no cross contamination. Sometimes, especially with oyster mushrooms, you'll experience uh, cross contamination and later down the line, you won't even know that until they fruit. So another way to um, make sure that you don't get contamination is to heat, um, heat it with a, a flame. So flame sterilization, or um, you can purchase a ceramic sterilizer but for my production, I just use one blade per strain, and that's how I avoid my cross contamination. So I'm gonna be starting off with a malt extract auger plate and this culture of local oyster mushroom. So I'm gonna to try to set up this phone so you can see um, more of the the technique that I'm using but I cleaned out the hood and that's the most important thing so now I'm going to be um, beginning my transfer procedure all right so the first thing you want to do when you're doing your plate transfers is to take off the parafilm now I noticed that this plate was labeled on the lid which is okay as long as you are only working with one culture at a time. Normally I label on the bottom of the auger just so if the lid gets misplaced um, you don't mix up your cultures. So now that the parafilm is off um, and my hands are sterilized so I'm going to sterilize these with alcohol. Um, I'll go ahead and open up my blade So I'm going to be attaching this number 10 blade onto the blade handle and see how the bevel of that blade lines up with the bevel of the handle. You just want to make sure that you slide that into the groove and then hold it firmly and kind of slide in that blade into the handle. Um, sometimes they get rusty over time, especially if you're sterilizing. But then you hear it snap, so I know this is okay. And I always save this foil to insert my blade back in when I'm done. Um, that way it has this little cardboard protector so you're not cutting yourself. So I'll just set that down on the side and notice the angle of the number 10 um, it has a pretty sharp point so that's why I like to use this it gives a clean cut for the mycelium so now I'm going to open up my plate that I'm trying to transfer and I'm going to be locating the mycelium right here in this area it looks nice nice and healthy, nice and white and rhizomorphic. I can smell, you know, the sweet smell of oyster mushroom, so I know that there's no contaminants or not a lot if there's any. So I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of this mycelium and right from this area here and then transfer it onto this plate. So sometimes they'll get stuck on there. And there you have it, very simple. And now this plate is going to take a couple weeks to grow out and I will check on it periodically to make sure that there's no contaminants. But from here, if everything is growing healthy, I will do the same procedure and transfer that into a liquid culture and that's how I purify my cultures. 
So to take this blade off, you want to be very careful and put this back into that cardboard area and then take your thumb and lift up and pull. And that way you have a sharp container ready to go. And I just like to fold it up like this and then throw that old parafilm over there. And that way you're really protecting that sharp blade. So that's good to go in the sharp spin. And then the next step is to take some parafilm and I'm going to seal up this plate for storage. So, good. and I like to do a couple layers of this. The pair film's a a little bit older, so it's gonna, it's breaking on me. But um, there you have it. So now I'm going to label this as a transfer to plate. So actually it's a third transfer. So now that that's labeled, it'll be good to go. Alright, so that's how I do my plate to plate transfer. It's a pretty simple technique. So I'm going to stick this back in the incubator for a few days and monitor that growth. And hopefully within the next couple months I will have some of these Aspen oysters fruited in the grow room. And I can either decide to use it in my production or not depending on the performance. I hope that you're enjoying these videos. I really like helping people learn, especially the, the techniques that I use in the lab. Um, like these videos if, if you're getting some value and share them if, uh, if you think other people are interested. But subscribe if you haven't already and keep your eyes out for more videos. Much love.